Good day everyone and welcome to my channel again. So in this recording I'll be solving two exercises related to binary trees in data structures. So the, those questions that were asked in uh, last year, so in 1920, uh, so it's last year, the first and the second session. So uh, they dealt with uh, binary trees uh, that contains a fraction. So the first one is about calculating with the tree. And at the second session, we uh, asked the questions related to Stern Brockett tree. So we have used the same question this year. So the first one, the calculate with the tree, we have used it in one of the of the labs. As for the second, we have used it in one of the quizzes of our weekly quizzes. So briefly, in a, a calculate with the tree, so we start with the root, which is which contains the fraction. So uh, it's, it contains the fraction one, so one over one. And at each subsequent level, we have the children. So the left child would be equal to a over a plus b. And on the right side, it would be equal to a plus b over b. So uh, this is the, the root. So on the left, we have a, which is the same as the numerator. However, the denominator would be equal to the sum of both terms. Uh, on the uh, other part, on the right side, it would be equal to 2 over 1 because we need to sum on the numerator both values. And on uh, the denominator, it would be equal to the same denominator of the root. And as you go on, we have uh, uh, fractions here. So they are telling us that we will use the uh, this definition of a binary tree. So it contains an element and uh, two pointers to a left and right subtree. And our element contains two numbers, two integers, a numerator and a denominator. So and they are telling us that we can use stack and queues in these implementation uh, and that uh, any element of uh, of in these data structures is of type B3. So we can use a, a queue or a stack, the elements in both uh, those data structures is a binary tree. So the first question is about to create uh, 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 these trees. So the input is a height. So we need to create a binary tree uh, of height four, uh, which represent a calcan wolf tree. So in the question, so we have gave them uh, the uh, prototype. So we have a height in the input. And uh, as a return value, it would be obviously a, a binary tree. So we first declare a binary tree equal to null, and then we pass it to a helper function in order to create the calculated wolf tree. So we have passed the numerator one equal to one, 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 so in the numerator and in the denominator, and we have passed the height as it is, and then we have returned b. So obviously at first, uh, there's nothing in b, so I need to create uh, the node, the node, and then recursively I need to calculate the left part and right part. Obviously, whenever I reach height equal to uh, uh, zero, it means I have finished. So uh, as long as high is a positive, I can do uh, the recursive call. So as long as high is greater than zero, I can create the, the node which contains the numerator and the denominator. So D reference B would be equal uh, so I need to malloc the uh, struct, so it's equal to size of struct node. And then I need to fill both numerator and denominator. So it's a D reference V arrow data, and we have two fields here, num, which would, which would be equal to the numerator, and then the num which would be equal to, to the denominator. And then I need to call this function to build the left side of the tree and the right side of the tree. So I will copy it from here. So to build the left side, so it's uh, the D reference. So address of D reference B, arrow left. So this is D left subtree. Obviously, if I look well to the tree, so on the left side, it would be equal. So I have the same numerator. However, the denominator would be, would be equal to the sum. So it would be here the same numerator. However, here it would be numerator plus denominator. And the height, obviously, it should be decremented by one because I need to reach the stopping condition. On the right side, so it would be the opposite. So I would fill the right side. However, here it would be equal the numerator plus denominator. 
and however here I just need to have the denim and obviously also I need to decrement the high so this is just for the creation of the tree so let's do a pre-check to check whether we have a, a syntax error so it passed let's do a check And again, yes, it passed. So we have here the, uh, different types of input. So this is the input for high equal to four. So this is the expected output. And uh, we have the same output. So we had also different uh, test cases. So a tree of high one, a tree of high zero, of high five, and height of equal to two, and even for height negative. So if you have placed, for example, a stepping condition, if height equal to zero, then uh, return, uh, return, just to, to, to get out of the function, you will have obviously uh, an error because we will enter an infinite loop because obviously if height is equal to minus four, you will be executing uh, those instruction and obviously you will never reach the stepping condition. So this was for the first question. As for the second, so we need to, uh, so they are telling us that the sequence generated uh, by the calculated tree, so it contains rational numbers. So, and if we do a level order traversal, so if we traverse D3 level by level, so obviously we'll need uh, a queue to do that. So uh, uh, the calculated tree contains every positive rational number exactly once, so also the sequence. So they are telling us the denominator, denominator of each fraction equals the numerator of the next fraction, the sequence. Ones. So, uh, for example, I look here, there's 1, 1, and then 2, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3. So, yes, obviously, the uh, denominator of each fraction would be equal to the numerator of the next fraction in the sequence. So, obviously, the first fraction, 1. So, here I cannot check it because uh, this is the first uh, uh, fraction in the sequence. And, obviously, the last uh, uh, fraction also I cannot check if 1 would be equal to to the next numerator of the next fraction. So we need to write an iterative function, obviously, because we need to use a loop. So we are doing a, a BFS traversal. Given a tree, so we perform the level order traversal and we check whether the sequence uh, corresponds to a Karkin Wilfer sequence. So obviously, we, we just need to uh, check these. So obviously, we'll not be checking if it's a Karkin Wilfer tree because, for example, I can skip one level and I will have the same. Uh, uh, a property so if i skip for example this level the denominator of the this fraction would be equal to the numerator of this fraction so obviously if i want to check if it's a calculus for three i need to uh, check if uh, each so the both children are uh, valid children of uh, a node so uh, obviously this is a question so it was asked to uh, just to test our students if they are able to uh, do a level order a traversal of uh, a binary tree so in order to do a level order traversal so obviously uh, uh, we know that we need to use a queue so if you don't know how to do a level order traversal you can check the uh, recordings of of uh, this course there's a lot of questions uh, that deals with a level order traversal so uh, we will be using a queue so q q equal create a queue and as a reminder our queue uh, it contains uh, three so there, the, there's pointers to a struct node so I will be using a temporary a tree because I'll be using, I'll be doing, uh, I'll be looping over a queue. So I'll be dequeuing and checking the front element. And uh, so let's see. So if obviously I don't have a tree, so if it's equal uh, to null, I will return uh, zero. So there's no, so obviously this is not a calculator for tree. So also if the numerator here is not equal to one, so as I have told you, I cannot check the numerator here nor the denominator of the last uh, fraction so i will um, uh, test those uh, independently it means outside of the loop so if uh, the b equal to null or the numerator of the first uh, fraction is different than one so i will return a uh, zero otherwise i will be looping normally over the queue so as we know i need to enqueue the uh, root so I will enqueue in the queue the root, which is equal to B, because I enqueue in, in the queue there's uh, trees. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, I need to loop over the queue. So as long as there's a front element, 
in the queue so queue address of stamp because i have used the stamp so i can use a b also uh, so i need to dq address of queue and then i need to check so as long as i'm going so in the queue i have first one over one and then one over two two over one so if the uh, uh, denominator is different than uh, the numerator i need to uh, get out so in order to do that i need to save the old denominator denum so this is why i will start from here so for that i'll be using a variable called denum which contains the denominator of uh, the last fraction so here i will start with the first uh, denominator so denim it will be equal to b arrow data dot denim so this is the first so as long as i am going so i will uh, take uh, advantage of these so i will check if it's equal to one over one by even testing it here so if denim is different than the temp arrow data dot numerator numerator so i will return zero so this is this will work even if for the first uh, uh, for the root of the tree so as long as i go if for example i have here two and three so whenever i reach this so obviously in data i have three but however in the name i have two so i will return zero so i will end the loop i will return zero so as long as i am doing the level order traversal i need to enqueue the left part and the right part so if the temporary arrow left is different than null i will enqueue the uh, left part so in the queue i should place the uh, temp arrow left so you can use you can omit using the temporary variable and you can use the b directly and if temp arrow right i will enqueue the uh, right side so the, and this is it, the level of the traversal so again whenever i reach out whenever i finish the loop i need to check also the last uh, denominator so i will check so if if d temp arrow data dot denum is different so here denominator is different than one i will return a zero so obviously if i finished all these i will it i would return one uh, to say that yes it's a correct uh, sequence so let's pre-check to check whether we have uh, some syntax errors so uh, so we have some errors so if here if it's different so passed let's do a check so we have some errors so it's expected oh yes okay so we have no so obviously we have skipped we have missed some of the uh, part here so let's us uh, repeat so we have uh, if b equal to null i will i would return a zero if uh, b arrow data dot uh, numerator is different than one also i will return a zero and then i will enqueue uh, the root and then i should place b arrow data dot denim which is correct and and then as long as there's a front element i will dq the q this is good so in denim if it's different uh, than uh, tab arrow data i will turn zero so obviously we have uh, omit that i need to update the denominator so if it's equal so then i need to update it and obviously it would be equal to not b but temporary arrow data uh, dot derive. so i need to update this because at each iteration it would contain the uh, the previous one so in the sequence if i reach here it means i would save in uh, denim the uh, denominator of the uh, last uh, fraction in this sequence last encountered fraction in this sequence And yes so it passed so we have here different uh, uh, test cases so all these are correct trees and even so for example here we have uh, a correct one so this one is not a correct tree because we have here two so it should end with one even this one is not correct because it needs to start with one over one and even this 
so we have uh, even we have the, the the sequence so we have the uh, uh, numerator of the next fraction it would be equal to the denominator of the first fraction so it's all correct however we know that the first uh, the root should be equal one over one and we have uh, captured uh, this error in uh, using uh, this instruction because we have uh, in the loop so we have uh, do uh, um, in all the traversal and we have tested even the first fraction so this was for the level order traversal in question three so we asked our students to do uh, a post order and a reverse post order traversal so they are telling us that in the post order traversal of binary tree we need to traverse the left sub tree and then the right sub tree and then uh, the root as in the reverse post order traversal we need to traverse the right sub tree then the left sub tree and then uh, the root so we need to write uh, two recursive functions one for the post order and one for the reverse post order traversal so this is a very easy uh, exercise so this is uh, covered in uh, the class so if there's uh, so it's a recursive function obviously there's a stepping condition so as long as b is different than null so in the post order i need to um, print or to traverse the left sub tree so b arrow left and then i need to traverse the right, the right sub tree, which is uh, B arrow right, and then I need to obviously uh, visit the root. So I need to do a print of so percentage D over percentage D. So the first one is the numerator, so B arrow data dot uh, num. The other one is B arrow data dot de num. So this is for the uh, post order. As for the reverse post order traversal, so I need first to traverse the uh, right subtree and then the left subtree. So obviously, if I do that, I will be calling the, the first function, which is uh, wrong. So obviously, I need to uh, call this function. So first, I need to do the right subtree and then the left subtree. So this is for the question uh, three. So it's an easy question. So, and it passed. So the idea here, so all the tests passed, so even if for the uh, uh, wrong uh, calculus for tree, so because we are just printing the tree. So uh, the, the idea here is whenever I do, if I have a tree, uh, if I do like this one, uh, like a calculus with a tree, so the, in the post order and in the reverse post order, if I look well, so uh, if I'm doing the both traversal at the same time, so we have fractions that are the inverse of each other. So if I do a post order traversal and a reverse post order traversal, so at each time I can check both these and check if, the, if they are the reverse. So this is the uh, question of the question four. So we need to do simultaneously a post order and a reverse post order traversal and check whether we have the uh, fractions with, which are the reverse of each other so in order to do uh, this uh, iteratively so obviously because i need to do a both traversal at the same time so we have also to, to stick with the complexity which is uh, around n so obviously i cannot write functions auxiliary functions and place all the nodes in, in a stack or or a queue or i don't know so since I'm doing a post order, so obviously I'll be using a stack. So we cannot use other functions to build the stacks and then do the comparison because it would take us a lot of time. So we need to do them simultaneously. So I need to do an iterative post order traversal and an iterative reverse post order traversal. So whenever I reach here, so I need to compare one over four with four over one. So if they are the inverse, I will continue. Otherwise there's no need to continue and I need to stop. So if they are equal, so I need to go and check 4 over 3 and 3 over 4. So if they are equal, I check 1 over 3, 3 over 1, and so on. So as long as I'm going up, I can check these uh, values. So in order to do that, I need to uh, use uh, two stacks, one for the uh, post-order traversal and one for the uh, reverse post-order traversal. So, so the, the, the iterative version of the post-order traversal, they were covered in, uh, in class and lectures. So uh, uh, our students know well how to implement these using 
uh, stacks. So we, they just need to use uh, to implement both traverse at the same time and check at each iteration if the both values are the inverse of each other. So it's an easy question because there's uh, the question here is to simultaneously do both traversal and we need to compare both values at the same time. So we need to compare 4, 1 with 4 over 1 with 1 over 4 and there is no need to compare for example 4 over 1 with 3 over 2 so both traversal so at each traversal I will pick one element of each traversal and compare them with uh, each other so there is no need to stop one of the traversal and to uh, uh, run other traversal which uh, which we will see which we have solved some of these exercises uh, uh, in, in uh, where we have used uh, two loops two traversers but we had to stop one of the traversers in order to compare uh, values so this one is an easy exercise relate relatively to the other exercises that we have already solved in this uh, course so obviously if there's no tree there's no uh, comparison so i will return a zero and i will re i will create two stacks one for the uh, uh, post order traversal and the other one for the reverse post order traversal so this is my first stack for the post order traversal and I will create an S2 for the post or reverse post order traversal. So as we have seen in the course, I'll be using two uh, booleans, done one and done two, in order to uh, stop the loop at each uh, iteration to pick one element and then to do the testing. So I'll be using two elements because uh, 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 I'll be checking the value, so val1 and val2, so those are two fractions, one from the post-order traversal and one for the reverse post-order traversal. I'll be using also uh, different trees, so I'll be using a current one, so this is for, uh, uh, I will be looping using it to do the post order and current two for the reverse, so obviously I cannot use the same B. And also, since I'm doing a post order, so in, uh, if you don't know how to do a post order traversal iteratively, so you need to have an auxiliary uh, pointer over uh, a node because in the post order traversal, in order to reach, for example, 3 over 4 and 4 over 1, I have to pass by 3 over 1. So we need to pass by 3 over 1 like uh, two, two times. First, in order to pass to the left side and then to the right side and then to reach 3 over 1. So obviously, I'll be passing by 3 over 1 like 3 times but however I need to treat a 3 over 1 uh, by uh, the last iteration so at the last time that I'll pass by 3 over 1 not the first time not the second time but at the third time so this is why we use a pointer which is called previous and we will manipulate previous in order to know whenever we uh, 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 reach or it's time to deal with the root node so we have two uh, previous, previous one for the post order traversal and previous two for the reverse post order traversal. So all these uh, uh, infos and ideas you can find them in the lecture. Uh, so you, you can check the uh, YouTube playlist or you can check the website or my Moodle for more information. So we will be looping. So obviously I'll be using uh, an infinite loop. So as long as there's some elements in those uh, traversal, I will uh, do the looping. So first I will pick one element in the uh, post order traversal. So obviously I need to go to the left, 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 pick one element. So we know how to do that. And on the right side, I need to go to the right side and then pick one element. And then I will get out of both these traversers. So I will get out. And so I have a bigger while loop. And inside of this while one, there's two while loops one for the left uh, for the post order traversal and the other for the uh, right post uh, for the reverse post order traversal so for the post order so as long as done one is equal uh, to uh, zero so as long as uh, i didn't finish the post order traversal so i just need to uh, reach at the left side and then get out of the loop and then i will get the element from the right the reverse post order traversal and then compare these elements so as long as uh, uh, i didn't finish from the first uh, post order traversal i will try to go to the left so as long as current one is different than a null i will go so i will push um, my three into um, my stack so s1 here and uh, current one and then I will try to go to the left. So in current one, 
I should uh, place current one arrow left. So whenever I reach here, it means I have reached the left part, left, left, left. Uh, and then, so if I need to check my uh, stack, so if it's not empty, I'll get the top one is not is empty stack I don't know empty empty <laughs> so it's not empty stack as one so if it's not empty so I will write all the code here so I will get the top uh, element as one address of current one and then so I will check so here is the checking so if current one arrow right equal equal to null or here I will check about the previous the current one arrow right is equal equal to previous so here is to check whether I need to treat the uh, uh, root element of of this traversal yes or no so in val1 so here I will save the value equal current one arrow data and then I will update the previous so then I would say current one is equal to null so you can check all these information in the lecture so we have animations and uh, we have covered all the details about how to do uh, an iterative implementation of the post order uh, traversal so I will explain it quickly once I have uh, wrote the code so here we go to the right and otherwise done would be equal to one. So whenever I'm doing a post order a traversal, so uh, uh, we, we, we go to the left left. So as long as we go to the left, so this is the part where whenever I'm, I'm into a, a, any branch. So for example, if I'm here, I will go to the left left left. And then uh, obviously when I'm, while I'm going, I need to push uh, those uh, trees, those uh, uh, sub trees into the stack. So whenever I have reached the end of these uh, left sub tree, I will try to check if there's some elements in the stack. So if there's elements in the stack, so if there's no elements, it means I have ended the traversal because there's no elements in, in my stack. So as if I have uh, traversed all the trees. So whenever there's an element in the stack, I will pick uh, one element so uh, if it has a right uh, side or if the uh, previous so the right side is equal to the previous one so uh, if you pay attention to that I will save in previous the uh, current node so whenever if I'm here so at first uh, uh, so it has a right but the current would be current arrow right is not equal to previous because I didn't uh, save yet the previous so obviously I will I will uh, uh, enter, uh, uh, so I will check, I will go to the left and I will do uh, those parts. So whenever I'm coming back, for example, let's, I'm coming back to this one, I will update the previous one and I will see, I will update the previous and now I can enter this loop. So I will save the three over two, which is here and, uh, 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 and I will check it later. So if this one is uh, wrong i will go to the right so which is the obvious case so if i'm here first time i will go to the left this is done this is done using this loop otherwise i will go to the right because this condition would be equal uh, to force because there's a right and i didn't yet traverse the right side so whenever i traverse the right side i would uh, uh, save uh, this part so i will go to the right so whenever i reach the, the, the node here i would save that the previous one was equal to current one and whenever i reach the root node obviously this one will become uh, uh, true so because i have already uh, traversed the right side and now i can traverse the root side the root part so uh, in all these I will save the root value in val1 and then I will do done one whenever I do done one it means I will get out of this loop uh, so after this loop I will also do uh, another uh, loop for the reverse post order and then I will compare val1 and val2 so the same would be done for the right side however I need to change some of these so I will copy 
this while loop and I will uh, modify it in order to be uh, uh, to be used for the right side. So obviously here I would have the second boolean done 2 equal to 0 and I need to loop over the right side because on the reverse I need to uh, 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 or traverse it, traverse the tree uh, right wise. So as long as current I will push current and then here I need to go to the right. So whenever so here obviously I should push in this stack 2 and I have current 2 so I need to pay attention to these variables because obviously I, uh, it would be uh, completely wrong since if I were using the same variable. So if S2 is not empty I will try to get from S2 current 2 and obviously here I should use the last so if left is equal to null or current 2 arrow left is different than previous 2 so here we have previous 2 I should save in val2 current2 arrow data so and here I will have previous2 equal current2 and I would place in current2 equal to null I will pop s2 and in down2 equal to 2 oh, however here I would go to the left so this is the opposite of uh, uh, the other traverse so here obviously we had an error so here we have done one and not done so whenever I'm, I'm, so at each iteration I will get one element, so I get one data, and I should place down one equal to one. It means I will get out of the loop. So I will get val one, I will get val two, and then I'm out of both loops. So for for so here I need to so here I need to check both values. So if they are opposite, I will continue. If not, I should return a zero. So if val one dot numerator is equal equal val2 dot uh, uh, numerator so we will keep so let's do that so we will do that uh, whenever uh, we have reached the end so it means at the end I have uh, uh, all these uh, values so let's first uh, write that so if val1 num equal num and the denum is equal to the other values uh, denum and if the first one is equal to one so whenever I'm doing the both traversal obviously I will reach here so if I have reached both values equal to each other and they are equal to one so obviously I have finished so if val one dot num equal equal to uh, I'm not writing val one dot numerator is equal equal to one and and val one dot denum equal equal to 1 so there's no need to uh, to check val2 because already we have checked that they are equal so here it means I have finished all the traversal and I will return 1 this is the stopping condition so I will return 0 if uh, I have a, a mismatch so if val1 dot so I will copy this so if val1 is different than uh, val2 dot denum so if the de denominator is different or there's no need to have and or if val1 dot denum is different than val2 dot numerator so in this case I should return a zero since there's a mismatch otherwise it means everything is good for now so I need to relaunch both uh, loops so I need to place done one equal to zero and done two is equal to zero so in order to continue with both loops so and this is uh, this is it so the if I will uh, enlarge the part so we had uh, two uh, loops the one for the post order traversal and one for the reverse post order traversal so at e each iteration we have uh, extracted one uh, fraction so and then we have compared those fractions so if it's okay I would place then one and then two equal to zero in order to uh, continue the infinite loop and check uh, and get two other uh, values to other fractions so if uh, there's a mismatch I will return zero and if I have reached the root one and one it means I have finished so there's no need to continue on the opposite way and it means we have uh, finished so let's pre-check so obviously you should pay attention to all these variables and not to mistakenly uh, uh, use another variables so we have here a current two uh, so we need to pay attention there's a semicolon we need to use a color uh, comma and we have here done uh, it should be done two 
so let's pre-check so it passed let's do a check and so we have a segmentation fault error so it should be uh, one of the variables that we mistakenly uh, wrote so let's uh, uh, review so stack one stack two we have done one done two val one val two and the current which are equal to those so while well done one is equal uh, to one so uh, we have all these hmm? so let's repeat uh, uh, instruction by instruction so we have while one so while done one is equal to zero as long as current one is different than null yes i will push s1 and then i will go to the left as long as there's uh, 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 there's elements on the stack i will get the first element so if there's a right so if it's equal to null, uh, to null or the right is equal to previous, I will get the first value. So current one arrow data, I should update the previous, I place current one, pop S1 and done one. Then I will go to the right and I would place done one equal to one. So everything is correct here. Current two, I would push in current two. So here's the error. I should place current two. So in current two, I should place current two arrow right. If there's no stack, top two. I should check the left okay this is correct current two current two so we have all two here so let's pre-check and check again so obviously this is the error so this is uh, uh, common whenever we are uh, copy pasting some of the code so we forget to update some of the uh, variables so yes it passed so we have uh, uh, all the tests correct uh, so we have done uh, uh, both traversals uh, at the same time and checked if it's correct or uh, not so this was the first questions about the calcan wolf tree uh, and the second question so we have a variation of the calcan wolf tree which is the stern brocot tree so the stern brocot tree was asked as a quiz uh, so we have so first our students they have done the uh, the lab and then we have asked them uh, the this uh, question as a quiz so it's it's an easy question so in the stern broker tree also so we start with the, uh, two fractions zero and one and at each iteration we do their median so first uh, we have we start from zero one and one zero so we do the sum of the numerators and sum of the denominators so we have zero plus one is equal to one one plus zero is equal to one and uh, then uh, at each iteration so i need to continue to continue like this however we need to uh, pass uh, the left uh, like as if we are saying here uh, the the adjacent free is a fraction so we need to uh, pass the left side and the right side of at each time so at first we uh, pass 0 1 and 1 0 and so it's the same as in the uh, calcan wilfer tree uh, at each iteration i need to uh, update or to create a new uh, fraction which is equal here the median or the sum of the two fractions uh, numerators and denominators so we had here also four questions so the first one was to uh, uh, create the calcan the the uh, stern broker tree so also we have a height and then we need to calculate or to create this uh, stern broker tree so it's the same as in the calcan wilfer tree so we had to pass four variables here the first uh, uh, two ones are uh, uh, the one on the left side and the second one on the right side and obviously i need to create this tree so it has a height so as long as high is height is greater than zero strictly greater than zero i should uh, create the tree so in the d reference b would be equal to b3 and i do a malloc size of struct node i need to fill uh, the num and denominator so let's uh, uh, write it so i can uh, uh, use two variables so it will be more easier so let's call it x and y so in x i should place uh, a plus b or a plus c because i need to sum the numerators and y b plus d and then i need uh, recursively to create this uh, stern brocot tree so here it's the address of d reference b arrow left and i need to pass a 
because those remain the same b because those on the left side so if you remember well so if i go back so at each iteration i need to pass the left and the right so um let us just wait to load the the the, the image oh, it's here so at each iteration so i need to pass the same a and b so at each iteration so if i'm here i need to pass the same a and b and then i need to calculate the other stuff so it's equal to a over b on the left side and then here i should pass x y and obviously i need to decrement the height as on the right side so i need to uh, keep c and d but i need to pass here x and y so it's very uh, convenient and very easy uh, tree to create so it's the same as the calc and wilf tree however just the parameter that the parameters that would change So, uh, so we have some errors. So it's expected like this. We have all these, uh, all these equal uh, to zero. So we have uh, zero, one, one, zero. So in X, I should place A uh, plus C. And here in Y, I should place B plus D. Hmm. So, and then I will create, uh, I didn't fill the B arrow data. So this is my mistake. So in all B arrow data, there are uh, empty, the, these are empty. So I should place in num X and in uh, the num Y. So B arrow data dot numerator is equal to X and B arrow data dot denum equal to Y. So obviously, I would not get all zeros. So I have the height, I have the tree, but I don't have the value. So this is now the correct tree. So uh, we have used the same test cases, even if with a negative height, in order to check that it's correct. So this is the uh, the tree, uh, the, stern, the stern block of tree. So in question two, we have, we have asked them to, so we need to write, a recursive function that given a stern block of tree and an irreducible function, uh, fraction f we returns a pointer to f so we know that in the stern block of tree all fractions uh, appears one uh, once and they are irreducible so uh, and um, so if we look well also uh, this is a binary search tree so we have here the root so all the fractions on the left side are uh, smaller than the root and uh, the all the fractions on the right side they are greater and recursively we have the same so it's a, a binary search tree so in order to find a fraction so for example here we need to find 3 over 2 so obviously i don't need to search all the tree so if i will start from the root so i have here 3 over 2 3 over 2 is uh, uh, greater then 1 over 1 so obviously i will not look on the left side i will just need to look on the right side so on the same and whenever i reach 2 over 1 so 3 over 2 is uh, less than 3 over uh, of 2 over 1 sorry so obviously i need to look on the left and then i have uh, found 3 over 2 so in order to do that so it's a, it's a, it's a binary search uh, tree traversal so either uh, we find that at the root or i need to look either on the left or on the right so obviously i cannot look on both sides otherwise it won't it wouldn't be uh, a binary search tree so for our students for those who have done a uh, 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 look up for a node uh, as if in a normal binary tree they didn't get the full grade and those who did it uh, using a binary search tree so they have uh, seen that it's a binary search tree they have got the full grade so obviously if b is equal uh, to null there's uh, no way to find e so we would return a null otherwise so i need to check if it's uh, the result is equal to zero so in order to check if it's the result equal to zero so if, if uh, uh, they are matching a value so i need to either for example multiply three over two uh, by 2 over 3 and stuff like this undo the negation so I have uh, so there's a lot of ways to do that in order to compare or you can compare the numerator by the numerator and denominator by the denominator so there's a lot of ways so for me I have used a variable double 
so we can use it as an integer it's the same so result for me would be equal to b arrow data dot num multiple e dot denominator minus so i have done this so b arrow data dot denum multiple e dot enumerator and then all these i have divided by so as if i have multiplied both values over 1.0 multiple e dot denum multiple b arrow data dot denum so this is uh, completely possible if I want to do that. And then I have checked if the result is equal equal to zero. I have returned B. Otherwise, I need to, ch uh, to check either on the left side or on the left side. So if the result is less than zero, it means I need to look on the right. So I need to find, so return, search. I need to find on the right side the element e otherwise i need to look on the left side so you can uh, do differently it's totally the same so let's pre-check if there's some errors so it passed let's do a check So also it uh, passed. So we have different uh, trees and different examples. So the this was also uh, correct. So this was for uh, part two. We have also two more questions. So uh, we have the notion of simplicity. So the attending us that the simplicity of a fraction is a property introduced by Pierre Lamotte. So whose research uh focuses on the music and harmony so he associated with any irreducible fraction d number so p over q the number one over pq so he multiplied the numerator by the denominator so and it called this a simplicity so they are telling us that the sum of simplicities of all fraction in any level of the sternal broker tree is equal to one so the sum of simplicity simplicities in any level so for so the sum of all simplicities in all levels is equal to one. So we need to write an iterative function that given a Sternbrocker tree, it will perform the level order traversal. And we need to check if the sum of simplicities of all fractions in any level is equal to one. So it's an easy exercise also. So we need to do a level order traversal and we need to uh, keep in mind uh, the level. So at each level, I need to uh, save uh, uh, I need to calculate the simplicity do the sum and at each end of the level I need to check if it's equal to one yes or no so in order to do a level uh, traversal level by level and keep the level so we have already also solved this exercise in a previous recording uh, so you can find the link in the description so we need so uh, in the in this exercise i will uh, choose uh, one of the variation which is in the queue i will have uh, an element uh, that will contain the tree and its level so there's an element and uh, a tree and the queue so in order to keep track of the a root so we have here the element and in which level is uh, is in and at the end of the level i will check if the sum is equal uh, to one or not so obviously since i'm doing a p multiple q so i will have one over p over q so i have a double so obviously i cannot sum doubles and check if it's equal to one it would be correct for uh, for for example at level five six but however if i'm reaching a level 10 so there would be a lot of uh, uh, the number of fraction would be very uh, small and obviously i cannot sum these values so we need to overcome this problem so we know how to do that we just need to compare one uh, so the difference in absolute value would be shouldn't be uh, uh, too big in order to consider it as equal to one so this is a technique that is already covered in uh, the first year so in order to do the level order traversal, so obviously we need a queue. So let's start. And uh, uh, so we need a variable sum. So this will contain the sum. We need element uh, queue. So in our element, in our queue, we have used uh, uh, an element that contains the tree and the level. So they are telling us to use this type. So we have uh, a struct. 
it's, it's called element Q, it contains a B3, it's called D, and an integer which is D level. So I will use two elements, EL and the temporary, and we have the current level in order to check the current level and do the comparison at the end of each level. So if the tree is equal to null, I would obviously return a zero because obviously it's not, there's no tree, so there's nothing to check. So at the first, I need to enqueue the first element. So the first element, so el.b would be equal to b and el.level would be equal to one. And I will enqueue the element um, uh, el in the queue. And I will initialize the value. So at first, sum would be equal to zero. And the current level, since we are starting, it would be equal to one. And then I will loop over the queue. So as long as there's a front element in my queue. So obviously, I need to uh, dequeue. And I need to test and enqueue the left and right part. So first, I will dequeue. So I will keep uh, here the part for uh, testing and then I would uh, enqueue the left part and the right part. So if el.b uh, arrow left different than null, I should enqueue uh, uh, its left part. So in temporary, I should place, so dot b, uh, I place el.b arrow left and I will increment d level. So temp arrow level, let me keep all these, it would be equal to e dot level, el dot level plus one, and obviously I should enqueue uh, temp in uh, b, in the, in the queue, sorry, in queue, arrow uh, temp. So the same should be done for the right side. So if el element dot b arrow right is different than null. In temporary dot b, I should place the pointer to the right subtree. The level would be incremented by one, and then I will increment. So here I need to test if, so if I'm still in the current level or I'm in the not at the current level. So if I'm not in the current level, it means I have switched to a new level. So if current level different than E dot, uh, el dot level, it means I'm a new level. So now I can check if the sum of the previous level is equal to one. So as I have told you, I need to check if the absolute value of sum minus one. So if it's greater than, for example, 10 E minus nine. So if it's greater than this value, I would consider that they are not equal to one, the sum is not equal to one, and then I will return zero. So since I'm using a double, so it's totally normal to check this because, so I can write one e minus 10 if I want that. So because in double, I can, I can reach 12 to 16 digits after the comma, so I can check this. If I'm using float, obviously I cannot check uh, one e minus 10 because in float I just have six digits after the comma, so I can, I can check it for example, one e minus five, it could be, it would be uh, correct. So if uh, if it's if it's if I didn't execute this instruction, it means it's equal. The sum is equal to one. So I can reset the sum and the current level now. So it would be equal to current level plus one or the current uh, level or el dot level. So I can just increment it, or you can, um, for example, just place it equal to el dot level. So. Whenever I'm here, it means that I'm either, either I'm in a new level or in the current level. So I need to add the value of the, the data, the simplicity to this sum. So I, will, I, will, I didn't do it here because I will do that always uh, outside the F. So at each time I should add the simplicity. So it's equal one uh, over the multiplication of the numerator and the denom denominator. So el dot b arrow data dot num multiple the denominator. 
so in in some of our students so they have uh, tried to uh, do the multiplication of the numerator numerator and then the denominator and then check if they are equal to uh, to each other so and then they have deduced that it's equal to one but the question it was to calculate the simplicity and then do the summation so the importance here is to do the sum of simplicity simplicities they need to calculate the simplicity so uh, obviously whenever I have finished it means I have uh, there is no more elements so I need to pay attention to that I need to to, to check the last level because at the last level I won't be uh, I won't execute this instruction because obviously there's still element so after finishing the loop I need also to recheck if the sum of the last level is equal to one or not so if the sum the absolute value of sum minus one is greater than this I will return zero otherwise I would consider that it's correct and I will re I would return one so let's do a pre-check So we have here a DQ, so it should be a capital Q, capital Q, so again a pre-check. So it passed, let's do a check. So now it passed. So the, 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 this, wor this works uh, correctly. However, for example, we have here a test case for a height equal to 10. So if I will be using just the sum equal without testing the, the absolute value, obviously I would not be able to check this. So if for the, the height equal to 10, obviously, so we cannot uh, draw the tree because there's no, no, no place. So obviously there, there would be too much values and it would be un understandable to see it. So obviously it would not work. So uh, for all our students, they have uh, those who have used uh, just the summation so without using the absolute value they have passed all the test cases except the last one because at the level 7 at height 7 the summation wouldn't be equal to 1 even if the output is equal to 1 however internally and uh, it wouldn't be equal to 1 so this was the third question so also we had uh, four uh, questions so it's about the Faraday sequence. That also the Faraday sequence of order n is the sorted sequence of fractions in the closed interval zero and one, so that have denominator less than or equal to n. So the Faraday sequence of order n may be found by an in-order traversal of the left subtree of the Stern block of tree. However, we need to backtrack whenever a number with denominator greater than n is reached. So it's very important. So it's very useful trees also, as you can see. So we can find the Faraday sequence of any order. So we need to write an iterative function. So we have a stunned broker tree of a stern broker tree and we have a number n and we need to display the Faraday sequence of order n. So we just need to traverse the left subtree of the stern broker tree and whenever for example if we need here the Faraday sequence of, of order 5 so if I do uh, an order traversal so I will find 1 over 5, 1 over 4, 2 over 7 however they are telling us that whenever I have a denominator greater than the sequence there's no need to uh, print that so I have 1 over 5 1 over 4 and then I should skip 2 over 7 I print 1 over 3 and then I would go to the left so obviously I would not print 3 over 8 because it's greater than 5 then 2 over 5 I, I should print that 3 over 7 I skip I then I print all these values those where the denominator is not greater than the uh, number n passed as parameter and obviously I need to stop whenever I reach the uh, root which is equal 1 over 1 because I need to just uh, check the left subtree of this turn bracket tree and obviously we need to write an iterative function so we ask this question for our students in order to uh, use a stack obviously and to know if they know how to uh, do an in-order traversal iteratively obviously using uh, a stack so this is a very easy exercise it's straightforward so we need to use a, a stack we need to use a boolean in order to do a loop and uh, at each iteration I need to print the value of the root uh, uh, and if, if is, uh, the denominator is less or equal to n. So obviously if the uh, value here is greater, uh, the, the denominator is greater than uh, the value of n passed as parameter, so obviously there is no need to continue on the left and on the right side because obviously the denominator would be uh, bigger at each iteration. So this is here also, so we need to pay attention that 
if we reach a node with a denominator greater than n, there is no need to uh, continue on the left side and the right side because obviously the the subsequent denominator at uh, lower uh, levels uh, they would be greater. So we have uh, placed mark on this uh, uh, value. So we need a b3 s equal to b. So we need to keep track of the uh, b3 b because whenever we are backtracking, we need to check if, I have, if we have reached the root. So obviously there is no, uh, we don't have to modify the b3. So we save b uh, uh, in s and then I will I would use b. So I will modify the pointer b. And whenever I come back, whenever b is equal again to s, it means we have reached the root. So obviously we need a stack. And we need a boolean because we need to stop at some time. So as long as we can proceed, I should obviously, since I'm doing uh, in order traversal, so in the first loop, I should uh, go to the left. So as long as B is different than null, so I should go to the left. However, there's no need to go to the left if uh, the, num the num numerator is greater than the number n. So if b arrow data dot numerator is greater than or the num sorry is greater than n, so there is no need to continue to the left side. So I just need to do a break. So I will get out of this loop. So this loop it just tells me to go to the left side. So we already done that uh, in the post order traversal. So at first we know we need to go to the left. So this is the first part. So if I reach a node uh, where the denominator denominator is greater uh, than n, I should do a break. So obviously there's a diff here. So obviously whenever I finish uh, the left side, so I need to check if there's some elements in the uh, stack. So if there's no element, it means I have finished. If there's an element, I will pick one element and then I will go to the right and obviously then I need to uh, loop. So if not is empty stack, S, so I will pop, I will take the element. I need to pop it, of course. And then, so here we have um, multiple uh, test conditions. So if, for example, I have reached the root, so whenever I'm uh, popping an element, so if I reach the, uh, the root, it means I have finished. So I place proceed equal to zero. Otherwise, if I'm at a node, I need to print its value. So percentage D over percentage D comma. The first one is B arrow data dot num the second one is b arrow data dot denum and obviously whenever i treat a node i should go to the right side so b equal b arrow right so this is uh, an easy uh, exercise so obviously this is it so we just need to loop and uh, so we go to the left and then whenever there's no left i will try to pick one element from the stack I will treat it, so I display the value, and then I will go to the right, and then I will repeat. So there is two ways here to stop. So either we have reached the root, so whenever b is re equal to s, or whenever the denominator is greater than n, so there is no need to go to the left side. And so obviously it means I need to pick one element from the stack, so I need to get one of these and then try to go to the right side, uh, if it's possible or not. So let's do a pre-check and then do a check. So in our pre-check, so it passed, so let's do a check. So yes, all those tests passed, uh, which they are correct. So here, for example, we have the Ferrari sequence of order n. So and yes, we have got the correct answer. So obviously we have here a biggest sequence. So we have a sequence three of height 11 and we need the Ferrari sequence of order 15. So and yes, it, it's totally possible and we can get the Ferrari sequence of order 15. So this is totally possible uh, to have uh, uh, using the stern Broco tree. So those are the questions. So if you have any questions related to those trees, do not hesitate to write to me and I will answer you back. And do not forget to subscribe to my channel and to hit the bell icon to receive all the notifications. And again, thanks for watching.